Hello Internet, I'm here with another RPG game update, and in today's video I want to show you how to add the moon phase to uh, your game. And not just any moon phase, not some made up moon phase, but the real world, actual for real life moon phase. Um, a great thing I've liked for other games of mine, like Poppy Seed Pets, uh, about having a moon phase, a real world moon phase in the game, is it gives players another like kind of connection to to the game in real life you, you know you go out and you see that it's a full moon in the game or sorry in real life and you realize oh that means it's a full moon in the game and if different kinds of things are happening in the game on a full moon right then that's a reason to to go and sign in um that's the same reason that we have all kinds of events right winter things or summer events or you know i don't know any any kind of holiday uh, Games love having events, and it's for that kind of reason, because when there's the event in real life, you're reminded of, of your favorite games and sign in and do all the things. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, the moon also, I guess just another thing I'm thinking about the moon, the moon just has like all this interesting mythology. So especially depending on your game, you can, you know, on a full moon, there's were creatures or, or whatever you want, right? There's, there's all kinds of, of great mythology surrounding the moon. So you've got a lot of flexibility too in exactly what you do, depending on your game. So... Anyway, so let's get the moon phase in. Uh, I want the moon phase to be displayed up here in the in the menu, so you can see it at all times. Uh, and there's going to be a couple kind of tricks to, to implementing the moon phase this way. One, uh, because it's going to be on screen at all times, we need it to update even if the user isn't doing anything. Um, usually for uh, a Blazor web application, and this is true of other frameworks too, like Angular or, or React, is that they don't they're not updating anything unless the user is like clicking or making some interaction. So if you have something else happening in real time, like the moon circling around the earth, <laughs> right? Blazor doesn't know that that's happening. Um, so you have to hook up some extra logic. The other thing is how do you determine a moon phase? C sharp doesn't have any built-in functions for finding out moon phase. I don't think any language really does. I'm sure there's some programming language out there that has that built in, um, but it's not like standard right then microsoft is just giving you a function out of the box that says here here's how you get the moon phase uh and it, we wouldn't like to go off onto the internet right you might think oh we can ask some internet there's right there's weather services there must be something for asking the moon phase but then you have to have an account with some third-party website or something or hookup right that's complicated it would be ideal if our game could just figure it out from math and it can there is math for this people have figured out it's astronomy um, and in particular, there's some math that I've been kind of maintaining uh, since I started SciPets in like 2004. So there's like some 20 year old math that I've been copy pasting from game to game and just recently for this video made a NuGet package for C Sharp so that you can use it in the game. And so we'll use that and, and I'll show you how to use that in the game. And also look at the math so you can see what the math is in case you're interested. But anyway, let's get going with putting this thing up here. Uh, and I'm going to start with the um, the issue of the timer of, of, you know, how do we update the page in real time, even though the user might not click, how do we make sure that the updated moon phase is there? So I'm going to make a little spot to put the moon phase. Um, and I don't know, I might want some CSS for it, so I'll give it a class. Uh, but this is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to say, you know, what is the current moon phase or something? I don't know. We'll do that later. Um, what I want to do now is, is again, that real time update. So we're going to need to know the current time. Uh, here we go. And we can start this to something, right? We can say, hey, when when nav menu is, is first set up, set now to be the current date, date time, which is now. Uh, but again, this isn't going to be continuously updated. We need something that updates this uh, so that Blazor then, somehow we're going to use now up here and say like, you know, get the moon phase or something. I mean, that's exactly what we're going to write. But anyway, but we're not there yet. So we need to, um, again, to update it on some sort of interval. And the way to do that, this is something Microsoft provides, is a timer. Uh, and be careful, there's a couple different timers here. You want the second one, system.timers. The first one is some threading thing. I don't know much about it. Um, I mean, I know about, I've done multi-threaded things before, but haven't happened to use that timer that I remember maybe years ago, and I just don't remember. But this is the timer we want, this system.timers. And when you select that one in particular, it's going to add this little using statement up here. It did that for you to say, ah, that's the, that's the particular timer, right? Not that other timer, this timer, the system timer's timer. That's the one we want. Um, 
it's going to start out with nothing. I guess it's not true. We can start it. So, so let's make a new timer. So we do that by saying, hey, I want a new timer. And here you say, how often, oops, sorry, should it tick? This is, right, how often do we want this to, yeah, to tick? And then we'll listen for each tick. And we'll hook that up in, in just a second. Say, hey, each time this interval passes, here's the code to run. So you specify whatever interval you want here. I think what we're really going to want is from minutes. But just to demonstrate that it's working so we don't have to sit around and wait a minute, let's make it every single second. We'll have it tick. Uh, and then we'll be able to, you know, and we actually don't need a set. We're never going to set a new timer again. That's the timer. So now on, uh, on initialized, so this is just, if, you, if you're familiar with Blazor or have followed along on, on other RPG game videos, uh, this is a built-in function for Blazor that will get called whenever this um, thing is set up. Uh, you don't use constructors for Blazor components for various reasons. You use this uninitialized. So um, we should make this async since it's a task. I don't know why that's not the default, but whatever. Uh, and all we won't need to do, well, I guess we need to do two little things. So we need to say what's going to happen every time this timer ticks, or what they call elapsed. I don't know why I prefer the word tick, but uh, we want to run this little asynchronous method. Uh, elapsed wants to pass us a couple variables. And this plus equal, I should probably call this out. This is kind of a weird thing, a weird syntax. This is how Microsoft has decided any sort of event type things should work. You say plus equals some function. And the reason they do that is you can have multiple things that listen. You could say timer elapsed, do this thing, timer elapsed, do this other thing, this other thing, this other thing. You can keep plus equaling more into them. So semantically, it kind of makes sense. Like, you know, you can keep accumulating a number or something with plus equal, you can accumulate these events. So I see why they chose that syntax, but it is a little weird if you have encountered it before. Uh, and whoa, that's not what we want to do. Um, they're going to pass us in a couple of variables that we don't need. A sender, I don't even know what that would be. And E, which is this event type, but contains a bunch of information about the, the, the elapsed time. I don't remember what's on any of these things because I never use them and we're not going to use them today because we don't care. All we know is that a second elapsed. That's all we care about. So we're going to set a new date time and, and the AI autocomplete is going to figure this out for me. And this, and this is, I'm a little impressed that the AI autocomplete knows this little detail. So in Blazor, which, which again, RPG game is built on top of, you have to let it know the state has changed. Again, as mentioned, Blazor is listening for like clicks and user events that, you know, scrolling maybe and, and other things to say, hey, do I need to change anything on the page? But has no idea that we have set up like this timer object that happens to be going every second and and blah, 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 blah. So we have to tell it when we're doing these kind of weirder changes, we have to tell it, hey, the state of this component has changed and you need to re-render yourself. Um, it's not enough to just assign this, this variable, which we use. We have to tell it, no, something has changed. Go and find it. Uh, for Blazor server in particular, you have to wrap it up in this await invoke async, which I don't know, it's kind of, in my mind, this unfortunate kind of truth of the, of the Blazor, like, I don't know what you'd call it. I don't know if the ecosystem is quite, quite the right word, but, but there's like three flavors of, of Blazor uh, or Razor anyway. Um, and they're, they're all subtly different. They're mostly the same. But there's all differences like this one. You have to remember to evoke, invoke async or it's not going to quite work. So anyway, some funny little gotchas there. Uh, but this is the timer set up. The only thing left to do is tell it to start. Uh, and again, let's convince ourselves it's working. Let's do a little console right line. And we'll just say, you know, timer. Sure, timer elapsed. Thank you. Uh, GitHub Copilot. <laughs> this isn't an advertisement for GitHub Copilot. There's other AI um, autocompletes, and you should totally use one. They're really good. They're really smart. As you can see, they're filling in things, even that little gotcha. Um, you should totally be using some AI autocomplete if you're not already. Um, but but anyway, let's see that this has worked. Also, it occurs to me I've left that at now. Yeah, so we're going to see this. So this isn't more evidence. That's not actually what we want to see, but maybe I should have intended to do this because this is pretty good. We can see that we have a timer ticking up every second. We told it every second. Uh, you might see some occasional, if things line up just right and there's just enough delay between the last second, right, and some render time, it might skip a second. That's possible. So if you, like, really cared about seeing something to the second, you might actually want to do, like, a slightly less than a second. Um, but anyway, what we really want is from minutes, which is still probably way faster than we even need. Um, sorry, from minutes one, we'll get rid of that. So we're sure it's working. Great. Sorry, let me stop. So the next thing is, okay, we've got this, you know, this string. 
uh, of, of date, but we want a moon phase. We want a little moon phase emoji. How do we do that? Again, uh, there's, there's numerous ways and there's other packages out there, but I have made a little one that is super small. Uh, you can see I've searched for it in the past, possibly on a previous recording of this video, a previous take. Uh, but this is the one, moon, moon math. That makes games not moon math. And I'll open it up in GitHub to kind of show you. It's opened on a different um, browser. So if, and, and by the way, so if you're using Writer, you've got this I, this uh, kind of UI for managing you get packages. If you're using Visual Studio, there's a different one. It, it looks similar, but different. If you're using VS Code, it doesn't have a UI built in. There's a plugin, um, but there's a couple ways to do it. One, you can run this on the command line, this .NET add package. That'll work for any package, right? Not just mine. That works for any, any NuGet package. Uh, another thing you could do is, oh, once we've added it, we'll see what it does. It's going to add it in here. So this is the other thing you could do. You come in here and type this out by hand. How would you know that it's version 1.0? How would you know the exact name, right? All these things you probably wouldn't unless you come online and, and, and look at these things. But right, it's really nice to, to use the UI if you, if you have it. Um, so again, if you're using VS Code, there's like a free plugin for NuGet. Check that thing out. Um, Visual Studio Writer, they both have this kind of UI built in and you can just search for the thing. So anyway, that adds this moon math library. And we'll look at the source code again. I'll show you how the math actually works under the hood. Um, but here's a reference for how to use it. And uh, it, again, it just so happens because I made this library specifically for this video. Um, and I'll probably use it in other projects of mine uh, now that it exists. But this is what we want to do, right? There, it happens to provide a, a function for turning a moon phase into emoji. And we can also get a moon phase off of a date time. So we have now all the pieces we need. I mean, we can almost just copy paste this and put it into the nav menu. So now, put it with capital N now, get the moon phase. And here it's saying, again, your ID is like, that's an error, except I know how to fix it. That's why we have the solid underline. And I pressed Alt Enter, but you could have also right clicked and it would say, hey, do you want me to use benmakesgame.moonmath, which I make sure to have in the install instructions as well. But anyway, there you go. Now we get the moon phase and it turns it into emoji. Let's see that that works. Rerun the game. Don't need this window anymore. And here we go. Now we have a moon phase. Um, and that could be the end of the video. If that is as much as you want to see, if you don't care about all the crazy math going on under the hood, um, then thank you very much for watching. And if you have ideas or questions, post in the description. And I have a playlist with more things you might add to your very own RPG game. Uh, but if you are curious, let's go ahead and peek at that math. And like, right, why didn't I just write the math as part of this video? Because we could have walked through that. Uh, and the reason is that it's bananas. Um, you have to, first what you do is you turn the current year, month, day into a different calendar, right? Modern days, we, in most, I don't know, is it most? I think most parts of the world, we're using the Gregorian calendar. Some other countries do use other calendars, uh, but, but the, the popular one is, is the Gregorian calendar. That's kind of one. Um, but there was a, a, a other calendars, and in particular, the Julian calendar. And a lot of old calendars are based on lunar cycles, not solar cycles like the Gregorian calendar is. And so by converting to a lunar calendar, something based on phases of the moon, right? That's like, that's half the work done is, is because now, now that we know we have a calendar based on the moon, we can work backwards and say, okay, well, if we know what day, we know what, what time, uh, you know, what, what is the current moon phase? Um, so that's this function. This is kind of the first thing that gets run under the hood is this um, get Julian day or it does some funny math that I don't understand, but I found it online again, like 20 years ago. And then once we have the Julian day and we do some other stuff, uh, we need to divide by this moon cycle length. So uh, there's this other concept of a moon age and the moon age is uh, how many days since the last new moon. So right at day zero, it is the it is peak new moon. Uh, and then somewhere around 14, you hit a full moon. And then after 29 and a half-ish days, you're back to a new moon again. That's how, how long it takes for the moon to go through its full cycle. So uh, the, the crux of the logic is, again, do this crazy Julian day thing. Um, where did this number come from? Again, I don't know where these magic numbers come from. There's something I found online. Uh, but this gets you back to a new moon, and then you divide by moon cycle length. And then basically, this is some like modulus logic, if you're familiar with the modulo operator, but it has to do a little special in case there's negative numbers. So we, we account for that here. 
Um, and then we turn that into a moon, the a moon age, right? Again, it turns it into a moon age, then we take that moon age and just say, hey, within certain ranges, we will assign that value to a, a phase. Um, so, so an interesting consequence of this particular get moon phase logic that I wrote is that the full moon is about three and a half days, right? right? It's this period between 12.9 and 16.6. Uh, and that doesn't match with how calendars say, right? Usually a calendar will say, hey, look, the, the full moon is on this calendar day. Um, there's reasons not like that. You could maybe find philosophical reasons like, well, you know, the, the moment that the full moon hits is probably like super close to the end or beginning of a day on some days. So why do we say it's on that one day, whatever? But I think more importantly for games is you probably don't want to, a couple things, you don't want to make the event, right? If there's something that special happens on a full moon or a new moon or whatever, uh, if someone is locked to just a single day to do that event, they might miss it, right? You're giving players a good opportunity to miss your event. So, so spreading it out over a few days helps. It also helps for time zones. Uh, if you want to pin down your new moon or whatever to a calendar day, then that's going to be weird for people that are in different time zones than wherever you've decided is the time zone that your game runs on, right? So I think spreading out the event over a few days makes sense. And if you put it in the game like this, and everyone can see it, and everyone will know, oh my gosh, it's a full moon. So people will figure it out. And, and they'll know from looking at the calendar, like, oh yeah, it's generally on the calendar full moon plus or minus a day or whatever. So anyway, so this is the math. If you, if you don't like that particular math, if for your game, you're like, no, it is important. I want the full moon to be on a particular calendar day. Uh, you don't have to use get moon phase directly. You could just get the moon age. Um, you can call get moon age. So out here where we did now, you could say get moon age. Now you'll have that number and you could make your own function to get a moon phase out of that. You know, you'd say like a custom moon phase. I don't know what you'd call it. You'd have to call it something have that return a moon phase, and then you can still call to emoji on that. So, right, you can customize this stuff. And then going all the way back to the beginning of the video, again, what do you do with the moon phase once it's in the game? Wear creatures if you want. That's an obvious one. That's what I do in Poxy Pets, right? Maybe your uh, pet does something different. Where are these, these actions, right? You could say, hey, if the date time now, uh, get the moon phase, if it is a full moon, then I want something different to happen in, in my game, right? Some different adventure other than the, the normal ones. So how you use the moon phase, totally up to you. You know, maybe it's totally new adventures, maybe just tweaks adventures. Maybe when it's a moon phase, something a little different happens in addition to the, the something awesome, whatever, right? This is where you, you go and do whatever you want. You can make whatever kind of wonderful game you want. So um, that is it. That's all the bonus weird math content uh, for the video. Um, thank you very much for watching and I, Kind of rushed through it before but if you do have any questions about this weird moon math or how i implemented it you know something looks wrong or weird too we just don't quite get it uh, feel free to leave a comment in the description if you have ideas for the things we'd like to see added to rpg game uh feel free to leave a comment and if there are other things you want to add uh or that, that maybe I've already made a video of, right? maybe I should say this before you comment and suggest a thing, maybe check out the playlist of all the other things, all the other videos I've made with different things you can add to the game, uh, gardens to grow stuff, um, different kinds of adventures pets can go on, uh, leveling up, right? getting stats, uh, combat system, there's all kinds of other videos I've done. So, uh, so anyway, check them out, subscribe maybe, do those things. Thank you very much for watching uh, and goodbye.